Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, I want to address a couple of issues raised in my Kubernetes repository in GitHub. So if I open web browser, and here's my Kubernetes repository in GitHub, and there are a couple of outstanding issues that needs to be resolved. And I know these two issues are uh, relatively old. So it was raised in April 10th, and this one was raised uh, back in August 23rd, that was a couple of months ago. But uh, I only had a chance to test these issues recently and they are like genuine issues because this is happening in my system as well. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the LXD provisioning. By the way, these two issues are related to the LXD provisioning scripts in my Kubernetes repository. So I, I gave it a try in my laptop and I had this issue, this one, unexpected LXD provisioning behavior. This issue happened, uh, I, I actually got two laptops, so I actually tested this on both of them. And on both of my laptops, I'm running Arch Linux, same version of Arch Linux, same version of every single packages, uh, because I manage all my laptops using Ansible Playbook, so all the packages and all the versions of the operating system, all the configuration settings, everything is quite identical between all my laptops. So the thing that was puzzling me was when I was trying, when I was testing these two issues, this, this issue here occurred on both my laptops, but this issue didn't occur on my other laptop, but it occurred on this laptop where I'm currently recording. So I think this is a good good chance to show you that these two issues, um, what these two issues are and how we can possibly resolve these two issues, okay? Right, um, let's go ahead and uh, git load my Kubernetes repository. Um, I don't know, so these two issues, it probably this one was raised by uh, a person sitting behind the name CloudMac. I don't know um, because this was raised back in August 23rd and this one was uh, back in April 10th. But I would like to thank these guys to bringing these two issues to my attention. Otherwise, I wouldn't I wouldn't actually test uh, these scripts. Okay, so probably they might have resolved this issue by now. But anyways, for those of you who are still experiencing these issues, uh, I think this video might be useful. Okay, let's go back to the terminal. Let's increase the font size a bit. Right, I'm going to git clone my Kubernetes repository. Okay, so cd to Kubernetes. And if I go into this LXD provisioning, so this one, let's use the script as it is. I'm not gonna change anything and I'm going to show you those two issues, right? So the first one here is, uh, I've, I've got this bootstrap script. If you want to spin up a Kubernetes cluster using LXD provisioning, you could just follow this readme file where you install LXD, you initialize the LXD environment, you create the KATS profile and on the left, so this one here, KATS profile config. So that's the actual LXE profile. These are like specific set of settings that you need to apply to every single LXE containers that you're going to be using as a Kubernetes node. So for example, uh, we've set the CPU limits to two, memory limit to two gig. If you don't set these, it will, because these are LXE containers that's running on, the, um, on my host machine, which is Arch Linux it will use all the memory and all the available CPU that's available on the host machine. So I want to restrict how much CPU and how much memory each LXE containers for my Kubernetes nodes uh, needs to have. So CPU 2, memory 2 gig, and a couple of kernel um, settings and so on. So we've got security.privilege true, security.nesting true, and so on. So these are like specific set of settings that we want to apply to our LXE containers. Okay, and following on in the readme section, so you create the LXE profile, and then one by one, you launch all the three virtual machines, one for KMaster, one for KWorker1, one, one for KWorker2. You bring up them and you'll see you'll get the IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. The machines are running. And once the machines are running, you're going to run these uh, bootstrap scripts. You're going to cat the bootstrap script and then uh, execute against each of the nodes. So you start by running the script against the KMaster node because that needs to be initialized first and then KWorker1, KWorker2, and so on. So once you've done that, you can see all the additional network interfaces, the CNI interfaces that got created, and then you verify the cluster, you deploy a sample Nginx application and see if the cluster is working okay or not. So that's the, the usual process, readme file. So this script here, I think I did a video about this script. So this one is kind of helper script, kubelx. So because I tend to uh, spin up this Kubernetes cluster quite often and destroy it. So uh, instead of going through all these uh, steps in the readme file, 
I created myself a, a shell script. Um, so basically it takes uh, kubelx provision or destroy as an option. So kubelx provision, so provision the cluster, destroy will tear down the cluster, okay? And here I'm defining kmaster, kworker1, kworker2. It creates the LXE profile if it doesn't exist and so on, so you don't have to do anything. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna exit out of the Vim editor and let me make sure I start the LXD service. LXE list. Okay, so LXE, LXD is running. I'm going to CD to LXD provisioning and cube LX provision. Okay, so this is going to uh, bring up a Kubernetes cluster with one master and two worker nodes and hopefully it will error out. It will have the same issue that I've shown in the uh, Kubernetes repository. So we'll address these two issues. So I'm going to pause the video while uh, the command is bringing up the cluster and I'll come back when it's ready. All right, so the command completed and you can see this error command not found. So this one, this error, it only happens uh, on the worker node. So this one is kworker2, error command not found, and this one is kworker1, task7, which is join node to Kubernetes cluster, okay? And it didn't happen on the uh, kmaster. So kmaster, all the tasks executed fine. It's just on the kworker1 and kworker2. Okay, so let's create the .cube directory, and then we're going to pull the file uh, from kmaster to the admin kubernetes admin con from kmaster to our local machine so i've got a command in my readme file if i search for pull so it's this file here okay so let me copy that and paste it here so basically we are doing lxe file pull uh, command to pull a file from a lxe container in this case it's kmaster so kmaster followed by the file that we want to download and we're going to copy that uh, as config under .cube directory. So we've got that file and I can do now kubectl cluster info. And we seem to be having a cluster up and running, but let's verify how the nodes are behaving. Okay, so that's our problem. So we only have kmaster clearly, the two worker nodes, kworker1 and kworker2 didn't make it. Uh, that's because the task seven, the join node to the Kubernetes cluster. So that's the one that joins uh, the worker nodes to the Kubernetes cluster. If it had executed fine, you would see kworker1 and kworker2 in this list, but we don't see it clearly. So there's the problem with the task seven. Okay, so that's the same issue that this guy reported. So if I go in here, you can see here, error command not found, error command not found. It's, it's the same error. So let's try and debug what this issue is and then uh, let's see how we can fix it. Okay, going back to the terminal. Let me open up uh, my editor again. So if I go to bootstrap script, so this only happened on the kworker nodes, uh, the worker nodes, which is uh, down below here. So this section, the last section here, task seven. So this is the only section that gets executed just on the worker nodes. So task seven failed. What I'm basically doing is I'm installing SSH pass, uh, which is a utility by which you can pass the um, SSH password to, to a host when you are connecting to it. So I'm passing SSH pass, passing in the root password cube admin, and I'm trying to download join cluster dot shell script from the master node. So if you look up here, so this section here, this one gets executed just on the master node, as you can see here, it does the QVDM in it. So this is where the cluster initialization happens. So once the cluster is initialized, in task 11, what we are trying to do is, we are creating the join command and then storing it in this file join cluster.shell in the master node. And when it comes to bootstrapping the worker nodes, we SSH to the master node and then download this join cluster.shell script. So that's the command where it's actually failing. So it's not able to, as you can see here, we are trying to download the, J, the join cluster.shell script uh, to the root file system join cluster.shell. And so I think this is where it's actually failing. Okay, so let's copy this line exec to kworker one bash. Let's, let's try this in one of the worker nodes. Okay, so I'm in here. Copy the same command. I'm going to remove the output redirection so that we know uh, what is failing and where it exactly fails. We do the SCP from kmaster.lxd, which is the container name for our kmaster node. And on the kmaster node, we are downloading join cluster.shell script. Okay, so here is our problem, permission denied public key. So why is it using the public key authentication? We, we defined, we wanted 
to use the password authentication, but it hasn't actually tried password authentication. If the password was incorrect, it would say it was trying the password authentication and we passed in the incorrect password or so, but there is no such entries here. It's tried away, ignored password authentication, and it tried the public key authentication. We haven't set up any SSH key-based authentication between our uh, master nodes and worker nodes, so it has to be using the password authentication. So let's figure out why it's not using password authentication, why it's uh, going straight away to the public key authentication. So if I exit out and open up the editor again, what I'm going to do is go into Bootstrap, and if I go down here to task 5, so this one here, task 5, it gets task up to task 6, from task 1 to task 6, gets executed on all the nodes and all the LXE containers, uh, regardless of whether it's a master node or a worker node. So in here, you can see what I'm trying to do. So password authentication, I'm trying to find a line in file etc ssh ssh t underscore config, any line that starts with password authentication, and I'm changing that to password authentication, yes. Okay, so, and you can see here, it starts with the caret sign, which means any line starting with password authentication. All right, let's go back to our KWorker1, and if I open up etc ssh ssh t underscore config, and if I search for password authentication, the first line here, you can see password authentication is set to yes, and you can see this hash symbol here, and in our set command, we had a caret sign, which means it looks for any line starting with password authentication. But this line doesn't start with password authentication. It starts with a hash sign. So this line would clearly be ignored. So our set command wouldn't actually match this line. But despite that, our intention is to set the password authentication to yes. But here, in this version of the Ubuntu container image that we are using, the password authentication is already set to yes. So despite it's being commented out, commented out means it's the default. So you don't have to uncomment it because the default is password authentication is yes. So we didn't have to use our set command to try and change this. But why, despite having password authentication, yes, it hasn't tried password authentication. It ignored password authentication. So there must be something else or there must be some other file that defined password authentication as no. Okay, so let's close that. I think the command is sshd minus t or something. Yes, right. If I do that and grep for password authentication, and there we go. So the command says the final value for password authentication is no. So it must be coming in from some other file. If I, if I go to etc ssh sshd config.d, there is this config.d directory. I'm going in there. And there is a file, new file, which I am not aware of. So when I was troubleshooting it, I found this file because I tried. Okay, so we are sending password authentication to yes. Let's see what's the final uh, password authentication value the SSHD process thinks it has. So later, you know, first it runs the SSHD config where we've defined password authentication as yes. So after this, there must be some file that sets password authentication to no. So that's why. So that's how I found there's this directory and there is this file and let's take a look at what's inside that file. And there we go. So this file defines password authentication to no. So this one we haven't actually touched. We need to change password authentication to yes on this file as well. How do we do it? Let's go ahead and fix that in the bootstrap script. Right, so let's go to the task five where we set the password authentication to yes. And I'm going to change this. I'm going to remove the caret so it doesn't really match a line that starts with password authentication, but rather it matches any line that has password authentication followed by any string. And we are going to change the password authentication followed by any string to password authentication. Yes. And in addition to that, in addition to etc ssh ssh config, we are also going to change that in etc ssh ssh underscore config dot d slash star. So any file under any name under sshd underscore config.d will also get replaced, okay? So I saved that file. So what I'm going to do now is kubelx destroy. So again, I'm using my helper script to destroy completely the LXD environment, the LXC containers, okay? So I've changed the bootstrap script. Now let's do kubelx provision again. 
And I'm, again, I'm gonna speed up this video. Let's wait, it might take about like four or five minutes to bring up the entire cluster and let's wait for it. All right, so the command completed, it took a little over five minutes and now you can see the Kworker 1 and Kworker 2 node doesn't have that error. So hopefully we'll have a cluster, but we don't know whether that would be a working cluster or not. Let's take a look. So this is a new cluster, so we will have to copy the Kubernetes admin.com file again. So let's do LXC file pull from Kmaster to our machine, kubectl cluster info. Yes, the cluster is there, kubectl get notes. Cool, okay, so that's a step forward. So previously we didn't have Kworker 1 and Kworker 2, so now we have both the worker nodes in our cluster, which means task 7 on both the worker nodes ran fine. So the nodes were joined to the cluster, but there are, I think there is some other problems that we need to resolve. So none of the nodes are in the ready state. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the pods, the state of the, all the pods. kubectl get pods dash a. Okay, so the problem here uh, seems to be with the kube proxy pod. You can see it's in the crash loop back of state. Okay, let's open that up in k9s and see what's going on in uh, those pods. Okay. So crash loop back off. If we look at the logs for one of these queue proxy pods, it's clearly those two. So once the queue proxy pod, which is uh, which is responsible for networking, so once we have that sorted, these two uh, things that are in the uh, pending state will resolve itself. Okay. So if I look at uh, the one of the queue proxies log, right, it says error running proxy server error open proxies net net filter enough contract maximum permission denied okay so this one here it's trying to set this um uh, setting to it's trying to update the enough contract maximum value to five two four two double eight so and it's failing and obviously it will fail i don't know why uh the kubernetes is trying to set this value but it won't be able to successfully set this value from within our LXC container if you think about our kubernetes environment here so I'm having my host machine, which is an Arch Linux laptop, and I'm using LXD environment. So all these Kubernetes nodes, the master node and the two worker nodes, all of them are just LXC containers, which means they share the same kernel space as the host system. So these LXC containers doesn't have its own kernel. It's not a fully, it's not a full blown virtual machine where it has its own kernel and things like that. So this one is just a lightweight virtual machine, lightweight container. So it's just a separate file system under different namespace, but it shares the same kernel as the operating system. So it won't be able to set, it's trying to set from within the LXE container, this command, it's trying to set uh, this setting on the host system, which won't be allowed even with security that privileged, even with privileged container, because these three containers uh, for Kubernetes nodes are privileged containers, even with privileged containers, it won't be able to set the parameters for the host system. So we have to manually do that. So set sysctl entry net net filter enough contract maximum value to 524288. It won't really actually work. Okay, right, let's quit that. And I'm going to, wait, let me actually grab that value because we need to set that value uh, ourselves on the host system. So that's how I resolve this issue. So kubectl minus n cube system logs cube proxy. Let's use this one. And the value that we are trying to set is 524288. Let's copy that. And I'm going to destroy this again because I want to start it clean after fixing all the issue. Right, so this one, we will have to set it. We will have to set the cctl option uh, for the enough contract max. So first let's find out what it is set in our host system. So minus an Arch Linux and so this particular issue which I'm trying to debug didn't happen on my other laptop. So the only issue that I had to resolve was this one which we already resolved and it's working fine. So we resolved this issue on my other laptop at this point, the cluster came up fine and it was running and I was able to deploy an Nginx pod. Everything was working fine. But like like this laptop that I'm currently recording, this issue is still there, and I hope many of you are still having this issue. 
So that, that's a good way to show you guys what, what it's about. Right, so we've destroyed our LXC uh, Kubernetes cluster. So now let's do sysctl. What's the option? sysctl a that will print all the option. Let's prefix sudo because for some of the settings we need sudo. And if we grab for net filter or enough contract let's let's go with net filter okay and if i do that there's lots of settings and what is it called uh enough contract maximum so it's net filter enough contract maximum and then there we go so net dot net filter enough contract maximum so it is set to two six two one four four and the container is trying to set it to five two four two double eight okay so that's where it's going wrong because it doesn't have permission to do that all right so there are two approaches here so one is to set this just for this session and then see if the kubernetes cluster behaves fine and if you want to do it permanently if you want to make this change uh, permanently you'll have to write it to a specific file so I'll, I'll explain both the approaches so the first one is to do sysctl dash w i think and the option is let's copy this and equal to five two four two double eight I think yes permission deny obviously allowed to prefix sudo right and Okay, so that's set. So net or net filter dot enough contract maximum is now set to five two four to double eight. But when you reboot your machine, it will reset back to whatever it is uh, two four two two six two one double four. So this one is just for the current logging session. And if you reboot it, it will reset back to what it was. And if you want to make it permanent, what you got to do is just copy this line. And then uh, do a edit this file etc sysctl dot d and give it any name but uh, do like this ninety nine because it uh, depending on the file name you give it executes all the files in this directory in a particular order so if you say zero one dash something that will execute first that will get executed first and the higher the number the later it will get executed so right let's do this as kubernetes dot conf and make sure it ends in dot conf okay I don't have the i installed because I use neovim that's fine right you do that and you paste in here save and that's persisted now so when you reboot it now and i'm going to delete this file because i don't use this in this laptop i don't use this given a cluster in this laptop so i'm going to delete that but this is how you do if you want to make this change uh, permanent okay so we've already made our change so five two four two double eight if we do sudo sysctl and grab enough contract max yep so uh, the current setting is set to 5 to 4 to double 8 so it should work now let's do kubelx provision by the way i don't know why this is required and since when this change was introduced and i'm also kind of puzzled why it this thing didn't happen why i didn't have to do this hack on my other laptop where it actually works Fine, same version of Kubernetes, same version of Calico, same version of Arsenic, same version of every single package, same version of LXT, same LXT initialization, everything. I don't know why. The only difference is the laptop brand is different. So that one is Dell and this one is LG Gram. Um, I don't know. But anyways, right. Hopefully this time we will have a working cluster. Fingers crossed. Okay, so the command completed. And again, you don't see any errors or anything. And the output was clean okay it looks clean right we again have to pull the file from the master kubernetes admin conf file so kubernetes configuration file we have that kubectl cluster info we have a cluster kubectl get notes the moment of truth okay so all our 
uh, nodes are up and running, kubectl get nodes. Let's take a look at the status of all our parts. kubectl get parts dash a. Cool. So that's really, really a good cluster. We don't have any parts, any none of which have actually restarted, so which means everything was actually fine. Right, did we check the version of Kubernetes 1.29.9? Okay, let's do a quick uh, testing as we usually do. kubectl create deploy nginx minus minus image nginx kubectl expose deploy nginx as type node port kubectl get all. Okay, the nginx pod is getting created and we have a service with node port 30864. If I copy that, kubectl get pods. Yep, the nginx is running kubectl. We need the IP address of one of the nodes. So let's do kubectl get nodes dash o wide. Okay, let's use the K worker two for example. If I do a curl and the node board is 30864. There we go. So we have welcome to Nginx page. Cool. So let's delete that kubectl delete deploy and service Nginx. Let's delete it. kubectl get all. It's all gone. I'm going to destroy my Kubernetes cluster by running kubelx. Let's try. Okay, cool. I think that covers this video. And by the time you watch this video, I've already merged the changes that I made. The only change that I made was to the bootstrap script to task 5, where I changed, I removed the caret sign and I also added uh, this extra directory etc ssh sshd underscore config dot d slash star so that fixes this issue so this one this change i will merge to the master branch by the time you watch this video so you can just pull the latest from my master branch and it should you should be good to go but for this particular issue as i've shown in the video i think the only resolution that i found is to set the what did i do uh to set this one but prefix that with sudo and if you want um, as i said earlier you can make it permanent by writing it to etc sysctl.d file right sudo vim so this one etc sysctl.d make sure you give it a meaningful a higher number so that anything that gets uh, run before that doesn't affect this particular file the configuration that you that you put in this particular file okay so that's it and i will um update these i will update uh, these two issues and i'll close these issues and yes okay so hopefully anyone having these problems uh might find this video useful give it a try and if you still have got problem let me know i'll be able to help um and i'm still using uh version 1.29 in this kubernetes for lxd provisioning in my previous video i updated the vagrant provisioning to use kubernetes version 1.31 which is the latest. Um, so in my next video, I will update the, I said, I'll update the LXD provisioning script to use uh, version 1.31. I also need to do a bit of code refactoring on uh, the bootstrap script, which I'll do in my next video. Okay, cool. I'll see you all in my next video. Until then, keep learning and keep on learning. Bye-bye.